In this video I'm going to show you how to do a break even analysis using a graph. There's a previous video on how to do one using an equation and you should watch that video before you watch this one. In that video we saw that the break even point is uh, found using this equation which is total fixed cost divided by selling price minus the variable costs. And just to go over that again and also to make an illustration for our graph I'm going to use a simple example where the total fixed cost for a company is $100. They sell a product for $10, which costs them $5 to make. And if we do that as the break even point, we get 100 on 5, which is 20. Now that 20 means that the business needs to sell 20 units in order to break even. If they sold 19 units or less, they'd be making a loss. If they sold 21 units or more, they'd be making a profit. But in order to break even, in order to make this project worthwhile, they need to sell 20 products. So now we're going to put this information onto a graph. Uh, for this graph here, we've got two axes. The one across the, the vertical axis, we're measuring dollars. The horizontal axis, axis we're measuring number of products. Okay, we'll call them units, could be number of products, anything like that. The first thing I'm going to put in is my fixed costs, and uh, by, the, by their nature they should stay the same. So it doesn't matter if I sell zero products or if I sell 50 products, my fixed costs will be the same. When we looked at the equation, we said the fixed, case, the fixed costs were 100. So if I sold zero products, my fixed cost would be 100. If I sold 20, they'd be 100. If I sold 40, they'd be 100. And I'm going to end up with a straight line across like this. I've just drawn a, a better one here. Okay, so this line represents my fixed costs. The next thing I'm going to put in is my variable costs. And we said that every, uh, every product costs $5 to make. So if I made 10 products, then the cost would be $50. I'll have a dot here. If I made 20 products, the cost would be 100. If I made 30, uh, the cost would be 150 and so on. And I'm going to end up with a straight line like this. And this is my variable costs. The next thing I'm going to put in is my total cost, and total cost is quite obviously just fixed costs plus variable costs. Uh, so if I was to sell zero products, so we're down here at zero, my fixed cost would be 100, and my vari so that's there. My variable costs are zero. So 100 plus zero means that my variable cost is going to start here. When I get to 10, my fixed costs are 100, my variable costs are 50. And so at 10, my total costs are going to be 150. For 20 units, my, you can see here that both my fixed costs and my variable costs are both equal to 100. So my total costs are going to be equal to 200. And if I keep on going like that, I'm going to end up with a straight line like this. This is my total cost. Now my total cost is always parallel to my vertical costs and just shifted up by the amount of the fixed costs. So if I take uh, these fixed costs, I've moved it up two lines. Uh, you can see here, so this is one, two lines that I've moved my fixed costs up. So this variable cost is going to just be parallel but moved up one, two lines all the way along. One, two lines. So it's parallel to variable costs moved up by the amount of the fixed costs. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. There's just one more line that I need to draw in, and this is revenue. And the revenue is how much money do I receive from the products that I sell. If I sell zero products, I make zero revenue. If, uh, and remember I was selling the products for $10 each. If I sold 10 products, I'd make $100 in revenue. If I sold 20 products, I'd make $200 in revenue. If I made uh, 30 products, I'd make $300 in revenue. And so I'll end up with a straight line that looks like this. 
which I call revenue. If I went back to my equation, we said that for this example, that uh, for a hundred dollars of revenue of uh, uh, fixed costs divided by the selling price minus variable costs, I would need to sell twenty units in order to break even. Now my graph shows me for the same example exactly the same thing. The break even point on this graph is where revenue equals total costs. So the total amount that I'm spending is the same as the total amount that I'm receiving. And you can see that that happens here. That's where t revenue equals total costs and that's at 20 units which is exactly the same as what the equation said, which uh, is what should happen every time. So the equation and the graph should show exactly the same information. You can see that if I only sold 10 units, then there's a gap here. I might just do that in the yellow so I can see better. There's a gap here where total costs, this the, the line on the top, is greater than revenue, which means I'm spending more money than I'm receiving and my business is making a loss there. If I was to draw the same thing over here, then this is my total costs. Uh, this is for, th uh, for 35 units here. If I was looking here, my total costs are here. My total revenue is here, which means I'm getting more money than what I'm spending and I'm making a profit of that much. Okay, but the main thing that the graph is looking at is this one point in the middle here, which is the break-even point. So you put all that information together, that's what the final thing looks like. The break-even point is where revenue equals total costs, and you drop that down, and that gives you 20 units. It should be exactly as the, uh, the same amount as what the equation said, and that's how you do a break-even analysis as a graph.